Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast with your host, metaphysician, Reiki master, and hypnotherapist, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week, we will discover teachings, tips, and tools to radiate your best life ever with practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is the Real Life Angel Encounters chat. Uh, I am Christy Clemens Hoffman, owner of Radiate Wellness, also the, the host of the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast, which is on hiatus for now, but you can still find it out there wherever you find podcasts. Also, I'm the host of the Real of the sorry, the Radiate Wellness podcast and there's leaf blowers right on cue. I thought they were done. So, all right. So maybe you found us through, found this through Radiate Wellness. Maybe you found it through my Facebook page, QHHT and more with Christy Clemens Hoffman. Maybe you found us on Meetup or one of our emails or even on our website, radiatewellnesscommunity.com. This is the second angel chat that I've hosted. The first one was so much fun that I thought, well, let's do this again. We had some people sending in stories and I said, well, let's let's get this going then. And uh, I wanted, there were two people that I wanted to make sure were going to join us today because they had stories and I don't see either one of them here. <laughs> well, here's, we've got Nicole coming in. Yeah, I don't see either one of the two that um, I was really hoping to share their stories, but I know at least one of you has some really great stories. So if you've not heard the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast, that is out there wherever you find your podcasts. And it is exactly that. It's real life angel encounters. So people who have had strange strangers showing up or Strange things happening, visions in a dream, um, seeing lights, all kinds of things, synchronicities, crazy synchronicities, um, had contacted me to share their stories. So most of the episodes feature real life people like you who are telling their stories. And then other episodes um, were stories from the news that I repurposed and actually researched and read out on the podcast, there was the uh, Cokeville miracle, which was really cool. Go listen to that. A um, bunch of children in a school were held hostage and uh, there was an explosion at school and the children described angels coming down from the ceiling to get them out safely and protect them. Turns out these angels were family members that were on the other side that the children didn't even know because they were passed before they were born. And then there's also the story of the Loretto staircase, which was built by a mysterious stranger for the sisters of Loretto um, in their chapel. And he built this magnificent, meticulous spiral staircase. There is also the story of the butterfly people of Joplin that appeared after the Joplin tornado several years ago. The children described seeing people with beautiful butterfly wings who swooped in and kept people safe. So there's some really cool stories out there on the podcast. Now, you may notice that my voice sounds a little froggy. I have a really, really sore throat today. Went to the doctor. I'm not sure if it's strep yet, waiting to hear back. But, um, you know, it's a good thing we're not doing this in person because I think I don't want to share this with anybody. But my voice is a little bit froggy. I hope that's okay. All right. So during this, angel chat i would love to hear from you uh if you have a story to share you can raise a hand and let me show you where that is down at the bottom of your screen now this is true for people on computers and or maybe even on ipads i'm not sure about phones but there's a little reaction button down toward the bottom and you can um click that and then click raise hand and see up on my screen there's a little hand displayed excuse me 
So that means that you want to say something. And I'm going to lower my hand. <coughs> Apologies, friends. This uh, cold is no fun. And then also with reactions, let me show you. You can click reactions and then you can heart something. So if somebody said something you really like, you can heart it. You can clap. Go, girl. You can't. <coughs> Excuse me. You can laugh. You can you can laugh. You can be shocked. So you can use these emojis. They're really fun. Uh, is there anything else? If you are walking around the house, um, maybe making some noise, you might want to mute yourself. That's the lower left hand screen. And then you can't hear me. In fact, there we go. Muted my cough. All right, I think that's about it. If you really can't raise your hand, can't figure that out, then please put something in the chat. There's a little chat feature and you can put uh, something in the chat to say, hey, I've got a story I'd like to share. Um, or if you have anything at all to share with any one of us, you can do that. So I hope that's it. And I see one of the people who I'd asked to tell a story is here. Hello, Mindy. Hello, sorry I'm late. That's okay. That's okay. We were just doing housekeeping and you know Zoom. Yep. Yep. All right. In fact, uh, Mindy, you want to start us off with your story? Sure. Um, so the story that came to mind, I'm a little dark here. Here we go. The story that came to mind for me was really my one or two seeming angel encounters that I've had. I know I have many guardian angels, um, many of my ancestors that have moved on are, are still with me, but I had a particular instance when I was living in Seattle, there's a Highway 99 that runs by our Central Park that's like our Central Park called Green Lake, and it was my quickest route home. And I was on my way one day and there's a big cement divider. It's a four lane road, two lanes each way. And it's a highway and people tend to go pretty fast. And I was in the center lane and realizing I needed to get over to the left lane to turn left in a, in a fairly soon. And I, this is my route. I just did this route many, many times. And on this particular day, I heard a voice say not now and it was very seemed very loud and it seemed quite curt and it alarmed me and it it startled me so I didn't get over in the lane I didn't get in the left lane and I was freaking out like what in the heck was that you know it was so different for me and so I didn't change lanes and just about 10 seconds later i was in a big suv this little mazda miata went speeding by on the left i would have crushed that car possibly hurt one or both of us we were going about 50 miles an hour and that i would have just crushed them into that cement barricade and i realized later after i got composed and i was like oh my gosh someone saved me from that potential wreck. And I then I started thinking about it and I'm like, oh, it was my grandma, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but whatever. And then I was telling other people about it and I said, it was a voice and it was loud and it was in my head, I'm sure, but it came across as, you know, a very like, not now, you know, just like as if someone were sitting right next to me. I'll never forget it. I can remember it as if it had just happened today. So I know it was a very unique feature. It wasn't something that happens to me a lot. Um, that is crazy. It you was know crazy. And it was just at the moment, you know, like 10 seconds before that car came past me and they were flying. So we would have had a pretty bad uh, situation. Yeah, that would have been really bad. And you feel like this might have been your grandmother saying this. Well, I just always think that she's my guardian, you know, but um, 
I just am really connected to her. And I also had a visitation from her after she passed. Right. That was my other guardian situation. But it was a very lucid dream. I Same thing. I remember it as if it were yesterday. And it was just her and I sitting in two wing chairs. It was kind of like a, a matrix moment, you know, where they're sitting across from each other. And she just wanted to tell me that everything was okay and not to worry because I was distraught, you know, upon losing her. And honest to God, it was a dream. But when I woke up, I knew that I had been visited by her. She um, was clear as a bell. It was her, it was her voice. Um, it was very short and sweet, but I, I had no doubts that she had come to me um, with that message. And then after reading a lot of other people's past life experiences, many say that that's their main message is to let their loved ones know that they're okay. So it really, really helps me, you know. Did it bring you some comfort? Absolutely. I wasn't able to make it to her funeral. And so I was not doing well. I didn't grieve. I'm sorry about the dog next door. I was not able to grieve properly for her. And so it did absolutely bring me a lot of peace and still does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a medium, that is most often what our loved ones want us to know. You're absolutely right that people have written that and said that all, all the time because they just want us to know, hey, I made it, wanted to let you know I got here safe. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they may not have much time, who knows, but it seems like it's really, it was very uh, soon after her passing as well. And it takes them, it takes them a while. It takes those souls a while to fully get to the other side. Yes. And it's much easier for them shortly after they've passed, and especially yes. when we're really thinking of them and hoping that they're okay and hoping that they made it. Um, it it's helpful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, those are my two biggest ones that I can recall. And like I said, I recall them because they were so vivid and so obvious. I'm sure I've had many other encounters, but those were the two that stand out in my if life. Think of any more, just raise your hand and you know okay, back great. on. Um great. so the what you said, Mindy, about it being like so real and so vivid that you remember it, that this is a hallmark of a visitation is that, and many of us have had visitation dreams yes, of our loved ones. And it feels more real than real. You might be able to feel like you're touching them. I had a dream with my dog that passed. I felt her cold nose. Oh, yeah. So they're more real than real. Because Tactile, also, yes. We're, because we're also not in physical at that point. Yes. So it's not like they're getting to our conscious mind. They're getting to our unconscious mind. And so we are actually on that realm with them. It's the body that needs physical rest because that's when we repair. That's when we grow. That's when we heal. But the, our spirit is free to roam around while the body's otherwise occupied. It gets kind of boring just sitting there doing nothing, <laughs> floating around all night, visiting our loved ones. So yeah, it does feel more real than real. And then the people who have uh, called in with their experiences like you, um, they describe the same thing that is just so real, so vivid. I can still hear that voice in my head. I still feel that feeling that the hand pushing me out of the way or that tap on the shoulder because it is just so real. So thank you for sharing. And Mindy, you're in Texas now. Yes, I am. Just outside of Dallas. Yeah, and there's lots of KU fans here. We're, we're all suffering a little bit after yesterday's loss. But, so I have my last year's hat on to make me feel better. <laughs> we went to high school together in Overland Park, Kansas. So yeah. a couple of Kansas girls. <laughs> it is Always a Kansas girl. Always at Kansas School. Be glad that you're missing the weather here right now. It is freezing. No, well, come on down. Cold. It's chilly but sunny. Chilly but sunny. And I'm holding on to that. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got Ruth has raised her hand to share a story. So Ruth, go ahead and unmute and maybe tell us where you're from. Hi, I'm Ruth, and I'm originally from San Diego. That's where I was born and raised. Moved here to Kansas in 2006, and I've been here ever since. So West Coast, Midwest, kind of a fusion. Wow. Um, it's, but I, I wanted to share um, a story that's related to my father who passed away back in 1998. And I lovingly like to call him my angel of all things that are lost and critical to my life and important to me, whether it's sentimental or from a business perspective. And the most powerful encounter that I had with my father as, you know, from the other side was the first time that I really had this encounter with him and probably the most powerful. I decided after being here for a couple of years to go ahead and buy a home here. So in 2008, I purchased a home and I was getting ready and it was going through escrow and, and paperwork was needed. And one thing that was asked of me was two, three years of um, previous tax returns. <clears throat> so I was diligent and I dug around and I was able to locate my 2007, my 2005, could not find my 2006 looked in my desk at work. I tore it all apart, went through my apartment room by room, box by box, inch by inch, could not find the 2006 tax returns. And I know that I had printed them and I knew that I saved them. And I was just really getting um, stressed out over it. And I just got still and I closed my eyes. And the one thing that my, my dad always said to me growing up, if you don't, if you don't listen to anything I say, make sure that you always buy yourself a home, have yourself a home and an investment that was so important to him. He drilled it into me to buy a home. So this was my first home. And I said, I just closed my eyes and <clears throat> put my hand on my heart. And I said, dad, you've always been the voice of reason. You, uh, I know you want this for me. I have got to find those 2006 tax returns. I, I really need for you to show me where they are. Please show me where they are. And I just <clears throat> kept searching, went through my car, through all my, my briefcases and everything that I had. And I, I just wasn't going to give up. And I kind of stood in, still in my living room of my apartment. And I heard this still small voice say to me, go to the hall closet. And I thought, well, I've already been through the closet. I, I tore through everything that I had in there. The voice was pretty persistent. Go back to the closet, go to the coat closet. So I opened the door and I felt very confident about what I was hearing. And there was nothing on the top shelf. Um, I got down on my knees. And interestingly enough, there was this backpack there that I had not seen previously. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. And the voice said, open the bag, open the bag. I opened the bag and the only thing in that backpack was my 2006 tax return. That's it. Nothing else in that backpack. And I just wept and I, and I, and I said, dad, I knew you would help me find, I knew you would help me find them. And so I always felt confident in the fact that my father is always with me, um, that he'll always be a part of my life. So oh, that was probably the most powerful incident. There have been incidences ever since where there were lost keys and uh, couldn't find them anywhere. And the still small voice told me to go to my bookshelf. And I knew because I had had enough experience with my conversations with my dad that I knew go to the bookshelf, go to the cup that's on the bookshelf. And this one cup on the one right side of the bookshelf, I, I go to the cup and I look and there's the keys and, you know, glasses and lost items that are really critical to me, things that have sentimental value. I had worked at a company for 20 years and they gave me a ring. I loved that ring when I, when I left that company, I, I, that ring meant the world to me and I lost it. And I said, I know, dad, 
You're going to show me where that ring is. You know how important that is to me. You showed me a strong work ethic. Help me find that ring. And I said, I know that you're going to help me find that ring. Just show me. I'll listen. Just, just guide me. And I started to walk up the steps. And the voice said, look down. And I looked down. The only thing on that step was my ring. That was it. Just my ring. And it was just another powerful reminder always that um, my father's going to be with me from lifetime to lifetime. He will always be a part of my life. He'll always be a presence in my life. I feel comfortable with that. And these are just, you know, anytime I've shared this with my friends or my, even my brothers, they've just been in awe, especially of the tax return. But knowing my father the way they all do, it it was a blessing to them. And they were pretty blown away. But it was quite powerful for me. Those are amazing, amazing stories. That is so funny. Did you, like when you found your keys in the cup, did you kind of go, oh, yeah, I think I put them there? Or was it just completely out of the blue? Completely out of the blue. <clears throat> that is completely crazy. out of the blue. It wasn't one of those things where, oh, I guess my mind just, you know, I was still enough that it reminded me. It wasn't any time that he brings these things to me. It's never where I would have put it. It's never where I, I know that I put it. Um, it. It just comes to me. Sometimes it takes a week. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it takes a week. Sometimes it takes a month. It took a, a month for him to uh, show me where my glasses were. And they just showed up in the floorboard of my car, right in the middle of the floorboard, where of course I've checked a million times, but there they were. So he always uh, looks out for me, especially with important, critical things. That's amazing. Was he like that in life? No, he was a depressed individual in life, very depressed. He was always had the voice of reason, but uh, he became very depressed in his life. And uh, all the way up till the end of his life. So it was, but the love that I have for him was really strong and I was his only daughter and we were really, really close. So I always look beyond that depression and I I, I just say to myself, well, you're now in the light. So the, all of that's gone, you know, and now you can fully, um, you can fully radiate. You can fully love me. You can fully be there for me now. There's no depression to stand in the way of that. Right. Right. Yeah. He's, when we get to the other side, we're just, we're good. We're fully healed. And all of that is gone. Those are amazing stories. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, the book, just one of those things, uh, jot or the, the phrase jot, just one of those things. This is where something will disappear and it could be minutes, days, hours, even years. And then reappear somewhere completely different. And there's a whole a whole book of this. And I can't remember. She was a, a well-known medium and psychic who wrote this book, just one of those things. And then there's the phrase, okay, well, it's, that's a jot, J-O-T-T. Um, one time I had lost the, I had a, um, an oven timer with a magnet on it. It was on the frid, refrigerator. And it had gone missing and my ex and I, we had looked all over the house, scoured the kitchen, all over the kitchen. I went and bought another one and put it on the refrigerator. And then one day I went to the freezer, opened the door right there in front, in front of the food was this timer. No idea how that would have happened. And then, uh, but then one time I lost my keys like for, weeks. And luckily I had a backup car key, but I went and made another house key and an office key. And then uh, weeks later, I noticed a cinder block that was sitting on my deck and my keys were inside of it. And I said, oh, that's right. I was bringing things in from the car and wanted to set my keys down and promptly forgot. But your yours were legitimately they were not there and you did not place them. 
That is so fun. What a great story. Thank you, Dan. I would like to rent him out if I could for when I misplace things. <laughs> so we lost my dad uh, December 1st, 2022. And he's been giving me feathers, just little gray, like morning dove feathers. There, I found one when I opened my car door outside of work. There was a feather right in the middle of my seat, the driver's side seat. And then another time I opened my door when I'd gotten to, to my office and a feather blew in and landed on my lap. And then um, one time I was at Enjoy Pure Food and Drink, Kansas City people, you might know that out in, in Leewood. And I just popped in for a real quick bite. And then as I was walking out, I looked up and at eye level, there was a bottle of wine and it said Sandpoint, which is the town where my dad lived for the last 30 years of his life and a little gray bird on the front of it. So yeah, our loved ones can get us signs like that. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those stories, Ruth. That's, I love Jot stories because they're just so freaky and so cool. Um, does anybody else have a story you would like to share? All right. Well, then I have one I can read. This is from Laura and Laura and Mindy both. I wanted to, since they had stories, I said, okay, at least we've got, we're going to prime the pump. We're going to get people who actually have stories and arrange this time so that they could be here. Laura could not, she had a family obligation crop up, but luckily Mindy could make it. So this is Laura's story, and she gave me permission to read it. It was really pretty cool. <clears throat> she said, when I was seven years old, we were on our way back home from church. Our neighbor was driving. My mom was in the passenger seat. I was in the center of the back seat. My four, four-year-old brother, Cliff, was to my left, and my 18-month-old brother, Danny, was playing on the floorboard to my right, obviously back in the pre-car seat days. Remember that? At least I remember that. Danny pulled himself up from the floorboard by the door handle. The door flew open and he fell out onto I-70 and 635, going about 60 miles an hour. I turned in the seat and watched my brother literally bouncing between cars as they sped by. We pulled over about the same time that Danny rolled in a ball, stopped right in front of the bumper of an old green Ford pickup truck with a white painted bumper and cab. The man who got out was about mid thirties, wearing a red baseball cap, denim overalls, and a white t-shirt. He bent down and picked my brother up. I remember thinking he doesn't know how to hold a baby because instead of scooping one arm under Danny's bottom to support him, he was holding my brother with one hand at the back of my brother's head and the other hand at my brother's hips. About the time that thought registered, my mom ran into my line of sight and snatched Danny from his arms. To this day, she swears she never even looked at the man. I watched her run all the way back to the car. When she got to the car, I turned back around to look at the man and the truck. They were gone. At this point, traffic had come to a complete stop because baby on the road. But the truck had not passed us. When we got my brother to the hospital a few minutes down the road, we were relieved to learn that the other man, that other than a severe road rash, he was absolutely fine. However, the entire room was stunned when they removed my brother's jacket and shirt to find two perfect tire treads at the base of my brother's skull and across the top of his hips, exactly where the man had been holding him. To this day, 45 years later, I swear angels drive green Ford trucks and wear red baseball caps. That is an amazing story. And you just have to wonder, okay, what were the physics there? Or the metaphysics, I suppose that left tire treads on his body, yet he was unharmed. That's just amazing to me. So 
What a crazy, crazy story. Did you know that Radiate Wellness is more than just a podcast? That's right. We're also a comprehensive, holistic wellness practice. Find out about our services, practitioners, and upcoming events at radiatewellnesscommunity.com. While you're there, visit our podcast page to read more about our great guests and even donate to the podcast. If you like our podcast, you can help in other ways as well, like subscribe or follow us wherever you're listening right now. Tell a friend, a family member, or a co-worker about the great content you find here. And if you wouldn't mind, please give us a thumbs up, a five-star rating, or a positive review. Sounds like a small thing, but it really helps. You might like to know about our Facebook communities while we're at it. We have a free community, the Radiate Wellness Community, on Facebook for news and great free content. Our subscribers group is Radiate U, as in the letter U, but also, well, you. There you'll find curated replays of past classes, guest interviews, and more. And now, back to our podcast and back to our guest. And um, I do have another story. Does anybody have any other stories that they would like to share here on the Zoom call? If so, please unmute yourself or raise your hand or maybe put something in the chat if you don't know how to do those other things. All right, well, I have another story that I'm going to read out. This is, these stories have come, are coming from the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast Facebook group. So it's a way to keep the, the conversation going about angels, synchronicities, and loved ones in our lives. So it's on Facebook. It's a free group to join, although there are some membership questions that I'd like you to answer just to make sure that we keep out people who are, or just curate the group for people who are wanting to share and not spam the group. So go ahead and join that. And, um, you know, we can discuss Angel Encounters, the podcast. There are 40 episodes out there of the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast. And you can hear them wherever you hear your podcasts. And um, maybe one day that'll come back. We just didn't have enough stories to keep it going. Now, however, I will add that this zoom call that's being recorded now will probably be turned into a an episode of radiate wellness podcast that's what we did the last time we had this chat so watch out for that and i'll post it on the real life angel encounters podcast group on facebook all right so here is a another story that is on that group it's from tina and tina says have you ever felt the softness of angels, of angels' wings against your face? I have, and I have a story to share with all of you. It was a normal evening of a busy day. I lay down in my bed to do my mini meditation where I just breathe in and out and let go of things from my day. I was completely aware of my cat lazily cleaning herself next to me and my older son laughing in his room as he played with his online friends. As I let go of my day, I heard a strange buzz in my ear, then a whoosh of pulsing energy surrounded me. I remember thinking, mm, okay, what is happening? It was like the energy around my entire body changed, an energy I have never experienced before. Huh, I thought, this is new. I We'll just roll with it. Then this is when I got caught off guard. I heard the flapping of gigantic wings in my ears and felt the feathers those rings of those wings hit the side of my ears and face. I can still feel it as if it happened just now. See, we were just talking about that a minute ago. Oh, uh, where was I? I stayed perfectly still, trying not to fear as I had been taught. Let go of fear, I thought. You're okay? And I was also thinking, ah, what is happening? 
I was then lifted off my pillow and up into the air. My energetic body was anyhow. I knew I was being picked up and and felt up in the air, but I wasn't afraid. I felt love. I then received the most gigantic hug and slowly the wings flapped and very gently placed me back on my pillow. I then felt brave enough to open my eyes. For a brief moment, I saw the rafters of the attic above me and then slowly the ceiling of my bedroom appeared. I lay still on the bed in complete disbelief of what had just happened. It was so hard to process. Aware and, oh, sorry. It was so hard to process. I've had intense visual meditations, but never anything physical while I was aware and actually felt physically. I cried. I cried over the intense love that was left in my body from the experience. I cried the next day. Would anyone even believe me if I told them? I didn't care. I experienced it and knew it with all of my being. It caught me so off guard I had trouble sleeping the next day. I was like, thanks for the visit the other day, but I think I just want to stay on my pillow tonight. And that is my angel encounter to share with this group. Keep vibrations high, peeps. They are making their presence known more and more. And I will add that uh, Tina, I know Tina, she's from Canada. So that story is from an international listener. Um, And there was a response that I thought was a pretty cool response. Sarah said, I have felt Archangel Raphael's wings wrap around me. And yes, it's an experience I have never known or felt so much intense love and security in all my life. That feeling will always be with me amazing story. Um, Before we started today with the chat, before I started letting people in, Archangel Raphael came to me too and said he was going to be present for this thing. So maybe you can feel him around you or just uh, have a sense that Archangel Raphael is here and present. I feel like he may be supporting my poor little voice in getting through this, uh, this event. Uh, because I need some healing around the voice area. So Archangel Raphael is the archangel who's responsible for healing. Of course, all archangels have their own jobs that they do. And there's about 15 archangels and they all have all their different jobs. If you'd like to take a bit deeper dive on archangels and ascended masters too, go to our YouTube channel. And that is youtube.com slash radiate wellness. I did a series a couple of years ago, 52 weeks of angel encounters or angel, I can't remember what it's called, maybe angel encounters. And every week I did a YouTube live to talk about a different angelic being. And sometimes they gave me messages to pass along as well. Uh, uh, Angel connections, that's what it was. 52 weeks of angel connections. So it's a whole series. Everyone from Archangel Osriel to Yogananda. And there's a bunch of different, well, 52 weeks of that. And that's a lot of fun because the Archangels and the Ascended Masters are with us, part of our team. All right. Now, does anybody else have anything that you'd like to share? Any stories or tidbits? Yes, I see Nicole's hand is up. So, Nicole, would you please share your story and tell us where you are located? Hi. Um, yes, my name's Nicole, and I am in Omaha, Nebraska. And um, just came across this group um, this week, and I was wow. excited. Yeah, so I hadn't heard of this group before, so I was uh, looking forward to joining. And um, I think mine is part of the story but I don't know as I have the ending and I think that's what is is I'm curious about um trying to kind of figure out um I when I grew up um there was a family that lived next door to us and it was a a mom and a dad and two boys and um one of the boys I was really good friends with growing up and then in about um it was like 
the beginning of high school, he had to move and we still stayed in touch. Um, but long story short, he passed away um, when we were in our 20s in a car accident. And then his older brother just recently passed away about six months ago with cancer. And I was in my office. I work from home. And um, I have a, a day bed behind me in my office area. And um, I turned around because I, I felt something. And there was the older brother sitting there. Um, the one that was my age was the younger one. So we were closer. But I turned around and there was his brother sitting on that day bed. And it was clear as day. And he was talking to me, but it was as though I couldn't quite understand um, what he was saying. But one of the stories I remember right before he passed is he was with um, somebody else I knew. And this person said that Troy is his name, that Troy said, it's going to be okay. I, I'm going to be okay. Like he was going to go to a place where he'll be fine. And, um, so he, you know, when, when he was passing, like, um, right at the very end, he said that, and then it was probably a month later when I saw him and then I saw him two days in a row in that same position on the bed. And it was just really strange because he was quite a bit older than me, but I wondered if he was connecting with me for his brother or. Um, you know, I just wasn't exactly sure. And I don't know if it's because I was scared enough or nervous enough. I wasn't listening, but it was just a really, it was a neat experience yet. I, I, you know, I still have some questions about it and I don't know if I'll ever have the answers, but <laughs> that's my story. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Again, our loved ones want to show up and let us know in some way, shape, or form that they got there safely, they made it all right, and that they're okay. Especially like we don't, we you didn't get to say goodbye to him. His family didn't get to say goodbye to him with an at with a car accident. And they just want to make sure that I just want to know right. that he's okay. And they'll show up and let us know that. And they're always okay when they get there. They honestly are. So mm -hmm. I wonder, Nicole, if he should, did, well, first of all, I wonder, did he show up to his family at all that you know of? Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. But he did not grow up with any kind of religious background. Mm -hmm. And then when he got married later in life, he married a woman that, um, you know, was a Christian and he joined the church. And so I kind of think that was part of it. But his younger brother that was my age, um, he would have never had that experience. And so I think it was one of those things that I've, you know, it's not that I don't, you know, it, it's just, you just worry about them, you know, and it was, it was a, such a odd time in our lives where you think you're invincible, you know, you just don't expect your friends to pass away in their twenties. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. I wonder if it was that he appeared to you, A, because he thought that you would see him or could have the ability mm -hmm. to, or B, that he didn't want to frighten his family and knew that they could be, you know, kind of jumpy seeing him show up like that. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they don't okay. know. He wouldn't want to shock anybody. Or maybe he tried to, maybe he tried to come to his family, but they didn't see him. And thought, okay, I'm going to just try it. All these people until somebody sees somebody me. Somebody sees me. Well, and I also wondered if he was representing his brother to some degree, mm. just telling me because the Trevor was the one that was my age, and he um, he was real wild, and he was the one that didn't, you know, ever follow any type of religion. But then Troy, the older one, did, and that maybe I would believe, you know, I would be more believable if Troy told me that they were okay than if 
Trevor came back and told me they were okay. They just lived two different lives. And so it, it very well could be. I hadn't thought of that. Right, right. Because I mean, I'm sure you were thinking, well, I'm not a member. I'm a, not a close member of the family. I'm not directly related. Why right. would person be coming to me? And sometimes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. the message through was like, okay, she's, she'd be open to this. I can get the message through that way. Okay. And that would make sense. Yes. Cause his parents were not religious. So, and I'm not saying you have to be, I guess, religious to believe in angels or anything like that. I don't, you know, I'm not saying that, but, or to have <laughs> had these type of experiences. But for me, it, it gives me some peace because we do have a religious background. And just oh, you do. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Next. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or at least you need to believe in life after death. Maybe not yes. what I say, but at least believe that there could be something afterward. After life mm-hmm. after death. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he could have known that and decided to get the message out that way. Okay. So like my grandmother, after she passed, she appeared to my aunt, um, I don't know, the next night, maybe within, within two, three days. And there are many people who have reported that their loved one is maybe standing next to their bed or standing at the foot of their bed and just showing themselves like that. Just to say, I'm, I made it, got here, no problems. You know, like, I tell my daughter's just driving now. She just got her license last week. And I, every, every time she leaves the house, text me when you get there. <laughs> just wanted to let you know he got, it. he got there. Oh, that's great. Thank you for that insight. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Anytime, Nicole. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a story of a podcast that I love to listen to. That's the Box of Oddities. I want to give them a shout out because it's a really fun podcast. And it's just all kinds, it's just oddities, all kinds of weird stuff. And um, one of the hosts, uh, Je- his name is Jethro, and he, his mom had passed when he was, I don't know, maybe a teenager. But he passed at home. And um, so they were waiting for, like in the middle of the night, and they were waiting for the, the ambulance to come, the funeral home to come and pick her body up. And it was like three o'clock in the morning, and they were all just like trying to keep themselves busy and occupied while, you know, the crew was coming and they just started kind of straightening up. The phone rang middle of the night and they thought, okay, well, what is this? Oh, and Mary raised her hand too. So we'll come back to Mary. And so they thought, well, well, who could be calling? Picked up the phone. Nobody is there. And they put it back down. Okay. That's, that's weird. And just kept straightening up and doing things. And um, the phone rang again, nobody there. This happened a couple more times. And as they were straightening up, they finally found a post-it note that had fallen down behind a desk that their mom was going to be going on a trip and had left a, this post-it note. And it said, I'll call when I get there. And so she, they think she did. Maybe she couldn't talk, but at least she could call and just say, I made it safely. All right. So Mary, what's your story? You're a good source of stories. <laughs> and where are you from? I'm from Lancaster, New York. It's a suburb of Buffalo, New York. I love your chicken. Um, yes. <laughs> I was um, listening to Nicole's story and it reminded me of a dream I had. I had a, a very good friend. Her name was Roxanne. Uh, we grew up together. It was my friend Roxanne, my friend Kim and I, we always hung out together. Roxanne was like a year younger than Kim and I, but it was the three of us. And we have spent so many years together laughing and giggling. You know, you can imagine from 15 to 18, 19 years old, there's a lot of adventures that we had. Um, But we all ended up, you know, growing up and moving further away from each other. But of course, we remained friends. And a few years ago, and it was probably five years ago, Roxanne um, 
passed suddenly. She was only in her 50s, early 50s. Um, she had bad asthma, and every once in a while she would end up with an asthma attack. You know, and this one day she did have an asthma attack. Her younger sister took her to the ER. And usually what happened is they would stabilize her and she'd come home that night or come home the next day. It was kind of, it had happened more than once. But I guess her sister took her to that ER and they were giving her the breathing treatments. And Roxanne said, you don't have to stay with me. I'll call you because they might keep me overnight for observation. Don't worry. I'm. She was stable. She was okay. Her younger sister left. And then something happened. She went into respiratory distress and did pass kind of unexpectedly, even though she had this chronic condition. It was really, um, it was really hard to lose somebody that number one is my age. And so like out of the blue, I couldn't believe it happened. And it wasn't long after we had gone to the funeral. Um, I would say maybe a month later, I had a dream. Um, and in my dream, and you know, you, you have dreams, but then you have those vivid dreams. And it was one of those vivid dreams. Like you say, they're more real than real. It was very tactile, those dreams. But I was at Roxanne's house and it was almost like she was probably in her 30s when I looked at her, like, that was the age, even though we were getting ready to go out for the evening and we were laughing and joking. And I said to her in the dream, oh my God, Roxanne, I had heard that you died. <laughs> and she said to me, Mary, I did. Like I was an idiot just for like, I did. And she starts laughing. And I remember I woke up and I'm like, Oh my God, that was the, and the, her reaction to me was kind of like, she used to tease Kim and I, our other friend, cause we were both blonde and she was very dark Italian. And she's like, you dumb blondes, you never get the joke. And she, like her reaction to me was like, I did. Like, like, of course you knew that you should know that. It was that same reaction that she gave me, like when we were 16 and, I didn't get something that she automatically got. So I just thought that was hysterical. And I did text that to our friend, our mutual friend, Kim, and exactly what she said to me. And I'll never forget it. And I realized that's her way of saying, look at me, I'm very healthy. I'm fine. You know, it's probably the best I felt, you know what I mean? Like probably in when she was 30 was the best time that she felt, you know, but yeah. And she did it in such a way that I wasn't sad at all. I laughed about it because <laughs> who says that to somebody? I did die. <laughs> it was so oh, funny. So in a movie. <laughs> I know, but this is the way she taught, reacted to me. I did. <laughs> you know that right. i did <laughs> i did i'm dead yeah oh my god that is too cute that is too cute mm -hmm. and you know what you said about our loved ones coming back about the age of 30 and looking good and healthy and everything we, on the other side guess what we get to show ourselves however we feel the best and usually that's young adulthood we're on top of our game we're we got to be who we stepped into who we really are. We stepped mm -hmm. into our life. And that's typically the age that they'll show us. So I teach this class, Love Never Dies. And I haven't, I need to do this again sometime this year. I need to schedule it, but I haven't done it in a while. And sometimes I co-teach it with a woman named Lisa K. Cooper, who wrote, You Are My Voice, How Love's Voice Never Dies. And she had written this book after her mother passed that she and her mom had this kind of spiritual connection anyway. They loved to go to Sedona and do kind of metaphysical stuff. But after her mom passed, uh, she started having all of these dreams and all of these synchronicities. I mean, crazy stuff. And But in the dream visits, which again are just more real than real, then her mom would be sprinting up the stairs saying, look, I can do this now. 
because she had, you know, really bad knees and arthritis and all the things. And she held out her hands in the dream and said, look at my hands. She didn't have any liver spots, no wrinkles, anything like that. She was young and looking beautiful. And um, our loved ones will often show up when they, when they looked and felt the, the best. There's another story. Um, I can't remember what the movie is called. It's with Greg Kinnear. And I think it's called Heaven is Real. And it's based on a book, a real life encounter about a little boy who had a near-death experience. And when he came back from his near-death experience, he talked about seeing Jesus and that there was this really nice man who talked to him and kept him company and kept him safe, and, you know, when his parents weren't there and he hung out with this man. And he said, um, and they, they asked, well, what did he look like? And he described this, you know, younger looking man. And he said, he said he was my grandpa. And the dad said, well, honey, you never met your grandpa. And he was really pretty old when, when you were, you know, when he died. So I don't think it could have been your grandpa. But later they were cleaning out some boxes and came across a, some, a box of photographs. And the boys picked up a photograph. He goes, that's him. That's my friend in heaven. And it was a picture of the grandfather as a younger man. Wow. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, our loved ones show up like that. It's quite amazing. Um, does Do these stories spark anybody else to tell a story? You can certainly raise your hand. All right. I can tell something that happened with my father after my mother died. This yeah. isn't my personal encounter, but it was my father's. Mm -hmm. My mom passed away and we were getting ready for the funeral. And I lived out of town. My dad was home alone. And if you knew my father, he definitely was not um, a true believer in synchronicities or visits from loved ones i mean he just wasn't that guy at all not to even bring it up but we got to the house for the funeral and my dad you know it was early morning still and my dad said mary i have to tell you something really strange happened this morning and this is not like him but he said i got up and i started the coffee pot and I went into the bathroom to get cleaned up. And he said, I was just walking into the bathroom when I realized it sounded like the air, he said, the air was like sucked out of the room. He said, like, it was like I was in a tomb. He said, I couldn't hear the, the cuckoo clock. You know, it would tick, tick, tick on the wall in the dining room. The coffee pot, he could not hear. He had the kitchen window open. He couldn't hear the outside noises, the cars, like, and it was like, it caught his attention so much because it was like, whoosh. And he said, and it made me stop. And he said, I'm looking around. And then all of a sudden there was like a whoosh and everything started again. And he said, that was your mother. He said, and I said, he called her Daisy. That was her nickname. He goes, hey, hey, days. Like he acknowledged her that she just came in. And, and I thought that was the most profound thing, especially if you knew the man that that was the most profound thing my father ever said or admitted to happening to him. And it happened in such a way he did not doubt that that was my mother just like coming through to let him know. I'm still here and I'm okay. It meant a lot to him. Sorry, I was muted. And we do recognize when our loved ones are around, if we don't see them, um, we just we just know. You might yeah. feel their presence. And this is kind of a strange thing to even try to explain, but it's just like, it just, feels like my mom right he knew it was her he felt her and i i was really happy that that happened for him too 
Right. Did it bring him comfort? I think it did. I think it did. And it's funny because my mother was and her sister, when her sister was sick, they always had a pact that if one passed away, the other one would try to send a sign. And I remember when my aunt died, she had, she said, make sure that you like do something with the electricity. You know what I mean? Do something with the lights. That mm-hmm. was the pact. And after my aunt, and she always said, and she said to my mom, Daisy, if you don't, if you're not good to those kids, I'm going to come back and pinch you too. You know, that was the joke. Take care of those kids. I love those, I love those kids of yours. So after my aunt died, the strange lights burned out. We had, they had a fluorescent light in the kitchen, which usually lasts a long time, that burnout. out. There was a light, you know, those old stereos that you have, but it lights up when you lift the lid. Oh, you know, the old stereos that sit on the floor, the light that lit up the numbers in the stations burn out um, and something else burnt out. And I remember my mother just swearing that is that is your aunt Anne doing that, that that happened from her. <laughs> she burned out those lights, although she never got pinched. Well, that's because I asked her, I said, did she pinch you? She said, no, she did not pinch me. So it is easy for our loved ones on the other side to do certain things because when we leave the body, what leaves the body is really our electromagnetic charge, right? The electromagnetic part of us. And of course, we know that energy can't die and it can't be created. So that energy just goes on. So it's really easy for them to manipulate electronics songs um playing even songs playing on the radio um it's easy for them to manipulate those things it's really hard for them to manipulate physical matter yeah you guys remember that movie ghost with patrick Mm -hmm. Swayze? he's trying to push a penny up the wall that takes so much energy and concentration i can't even imagine if you guys like to watch the the tv show ghosts there's an american version and a british version i love them both but the, in each there's a character they all all of the ghosts have their different abilities like one can do lights one is a smell and uh in the american version one y- you walk through her and you feel hot, like you're stoned uh, but then <laughs> In the U.S. and the British version, there's one who can push things and like, like touch computer keys and push a cup on the on the table. And it takes you can just tell it's like (laughs) so much. effort. But certain things that they can do and manipulate really easily. So, again, my friend Lisa Cooper, who wrote You Are My Voice. After her mom passed, they all went out to celebrate her daughter's eighth grade graduation. They went to a Mexican restaurant and they were having so much fun. The music was playing all this, you know, Mexican music, the mariachi stuff, the just like traditional type of Mexican music. And they were talking about how it would have been so fun if grandma could have been here. She would have loved this party. She would have loved to be here for our celebrations. And then the song Celebrate came on out of nowhere. Celebrate by Cool and the Gang, not a Mexican song, not traditional in any way, but certainly they're that Lisa's mom's favorite song because she loved to party. And so they can do that, but it's kind of hard for hard to pinch somebody. I can't imagine. (laughs) (laughs) Not to say it can't ever happen. But it just takes a lot of energy to do that. Yeah. And sometimes people will feel someone brush up on them, like brush them or even push them or shove them. Um, that's usually not our loved ones, but we can physically feel loved ones too. All right. I have to acknowledge this. Archangel Raphael, like I said, came to me before we got started and he's been talking me, to me the whole time. and. He just wants to stress to each and every one of us that things are going to be getting fairly tough in the years to come and to remember to always stay grounded and that sometimes just to understand that sometimes 
uh, when we feel like I've got a sore throat now. And this was his example to me. Like the sore throat is to remind me to be in my body. And sometimes we'll have little aches and pains and, and physical symptoms and issues just as a reminder, it's like, yes, you have a body, you need to be in it. And so to be grounded. And I think that's pretty important. The guides are always telling me about, we need to keep the human in the human experience because so many of us get in our heads, we're out, you know, we'd rather, much rather be in the fifth dimension and above. We'd much rather be in a spiritual plane. We'd much rather be with our star brothers and sisters but it's so important to be focused on the human. And that's where we're, that's what we came here to do is to be human. So focus on the human in the human experience. And so, um, in fact, I acknowledge this and I, I'm starting to feel the, the sore throat fade. So that's kind of cool. All right. Well, we are at time, my friends. If you're not on the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast group on Facebook, please join free to join, of course. And we do ask a few little membership questions. Just answer those and you're in like Flynn. Good place to share these things, to look up old episodes of the Real Life Angel Encounters podcast. You can also go to the website, radiatewellnesscommunity.com slash Angel Encounters podcast and our Real Life Angel Encounters podcast. And you can see all of our old episodes. They're also just, you know, on all the podcast platforms, all of them. And so you can find that and then listen to the Radiate Wellness podcast, where this will probably be showing up in a few weeks and just stay in touch, keep in touch with me, either on the Facebook group or just reach out on uh, social media or on the website, radiatewellnesscommunity.com. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for showing up for this real life Angel Encounters chat. Be well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Radiate Wellness is an international community of holistic and alternative healers dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.